you'll probably not have seen this since the last time we actually deployed it, which was sea trials two summers ago. Alan has had an anchor for as long as I've known him. In fact, it was one of the first purchases we made. It's slightly oversized for a 25 foot boat at 16 kilograms, but security is best. And it means that we'll be secure even when Alan is fully loaded with supplies. A traditional shape galvanized anchor, which of course has its appropriately sized and length chain and nylon anchor rope to go with it. This was the anti-kink protection we initially installed, a swivel attached by a couple of stainless shackles. This is a common setup, but I was alerted to a simpler and nearly but not really comparatively priced alternative. So not one to deny myself an opportunity for additional work, we've switched over to one of these. It's an all-in-one stainless swivel with hex allen key pins, which apparently get accidentally snagged less often when on the seabed. This should theoretically mean I don't need to dive down and rescue an anchor no longer attached to Allen. I did want to mount the anchor vertically on a railing, heavy end down, but in practice that's not a goer, so we're going with convention. Nearly. Yes, we're having a bow roller, but aside from being comically expensive, big long ones take up a lot of platform space, are more of a trip hazard, and can't be removed easily. So I'm going with one that can fit my anchor dimensions, but that's also in general neatly sized. To get sufficient reach, a solid flat bar extension of 316 grade stainless to match. Sketching all this out to make sure it would work was pretty simple once I had mocked it all up on the bow to triple check the point of the anchor wouldn't bash into Alan's fiberglass, and then came the expected sequence of hole enlargement, marking, and then drilling corresponding holes in the flat bar. Finally, a trio of bolts to provide a strong yet removable clamp. I needed another trio of holes up the other end, and they are to be chunky M10 sized holes. The standard procession of pilot, then 6, 8 and 10 millimeter drill bits limits the quantity of frustrated yells of Alan! Alan! Clear space on the bow platform is woeful, so I'm removing the final unused legacy of Alan's lifeboat Davit days. I actually don't know what it is. Do you? Regardless, with my jam spanner technique deployed once more, it's off to the scrap dealer with it. It's left behind a bit of a mess, and those holes left over are no use for me, so having desiliconed it, I filled them with good quality epoxy filler. I could have plugged and glassed over, but we needed to get this done. They were rasped and filed flat, and then the next stage was a corresponding solid plate to be placed the other side of the fiberglass deck. I have a seemingly limitless supply of 6mm thick bar from the ballast days, so with my grande sized grinder, I selected a suitable length section, drilled it, smoothed the sharp bits, and countersunk. I mucked up the right place on the gel coat to start drilling, and before long all three holes were made. I put some duct tape under the area inside so that most of the fiberglass dust was caught and could be binned without making a mess. It was not quite within reach, inside to outside, so when tightening the nylock nuts, I needed the jam spanner again, and of course I used plenty of sealant so that the C remains on the correct side of Alan's shell. Good. I'm probably going to put a tapered wooden plank on top of all of this, so the anchor can bash into that and not Alan's paintwork. Wood. On a boat. Whatever next. Speaking of the anchor, I drilled a hole in it, so it fits the retaining pin that's on the end of the anchor roller assembly. And then I zinc coated the hole so it's not a way in for corrosion. It was time to send the anchor aloft and see how it fits in. With such a small bow platform and with a chunky anchor, it's bound to dominate somewhat. But some bad news. Although the overhang extension is just a few inches and we're talking about a solid steel extender, sadly this was more of a moment that I hoped for. There's some movement and spring. We can't have that, otherwise when in motion, the whole thing will bounce up and down. Down it comes, and whilst I await in the post a proper braced bracket, I experimented with a basic right angle bracket, which did something, but not enough. I'll use the same holes for the proper bracket when it arrives, so the swap over should take only about half an hour. The retaining pin at the front of the bow roller won't be enough to protect from accidental loss, so I'm also connecting the tail end to an anchor fixed into the shell over here on the bow face. I don't have an anchor chain locker, so my plan is that the rope and chain lives inside, down in the bow when not in use, and the anchor stays outside. I'll have another one for you very soon, but to those of you who have contributed to Alan's diesel fuel reserves for our imminent setting off, I'm most grateful. Alan just sort of shrugged a bit, but he's hard to elicit a thank you from. Give him time. 
I've also simplified the status indicator on the web page to show wise and kind donator totals for the diesel and also for the marina costs. Cheers and bye.